So, I guess to, part two to answer the question of how do you stay positive in an overwhelmingly negative world, or world in which negativity is being presented to us overwhelmingly, um, would be, well, let me just start off by saying that, you know, whatever life situation we find ourselves in, whether we're going to work every day being surrounded maybe by people that we don't like, maybe by hostile negative people, maybe our family, there's abuse involved, um, maybe we're in Iraq or Afghanistan and we're surrounded by things that we really don't want to see and maybe we're being told to do things that we really don't want to do when we're seeing other people do things that we'd rather not see happen. Maybe we're in prison. Maybe we are in a great deal of pain and terribly sick. There are just so many different scenarios in which, as human beings, we could be in and be surrounded by overwhelmingly negative situations. So, in those cases, how do you how do you overcome that? How do you feel positive? How do you break free of that in order to have some kind of hope and happiness in your life or in order to start drawing more positive situations and scenarios into your life? Because I'm going to tell you that the way the law of attraction works, whether you believe in it or not, it doesn't matter. It, it works anyways. And it's only one universal law, but the way that it works, it takes everything from your senses, what you're seeing, smelling, touching, tasting, hearing, and it joins it to emotion. And when the emotion is triggered, that happens in your subconscious. The emotion goes all the way back to your childhood. It will remind you of anything positive and negative you've ever experienced in your childhood growing up or in your life. And when the emotional part kicks in, it causes your subconscious mind to accept the data or the input coming in, which is what you see, smell, hear, touch, taste. And it, it couples it with the feeling, and then your subconscious starts to create or draw, like a magnet, similar energy structures to it. And that's all it is. To the subconscious is energy structures. It's not going to differentiate between, like I was saying in another video, if you're watching a vampire movie and you think the actor playing the vampire is cute or whatever, your subconscious is not going to differentiate between the vampire murdering somebody and the actor being cute and who the actor really is and the lifestyle they live is not going to differentiate that. So. You might be saying, oh, this vampire is terrible and scary, but in reality you're having a heart-to-heart -heart emotional connection with the character in the movie, and then all of a sudden you start to draw people who are energy vampires, people who are psychic vampires, people who are violent, etc., 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 and you ask yourself, why is this happening to me? Why do I always draw the crazies? Why do I draw the stalkers? Why do I draw this type of person over and over again? And it really does have to do with what you are surrounded by on a daily basis and what you allow to emotionally connect with you. So if you're one of those people who is able to go work in a prison and shut it off emotionally and not let it get to you or a mental institution or a cancer ward, then maybe these things won't start to draw certain types of energies towards you, but if you're not, if you're unable to do that, if you're very empathetic and sympathetic, you will, and I'm not saying those are bad qualities, but you will find similar energies being drawn to you throughout your life. So if you're a mental health counselor, you suddenly find that a friend or spouse who you thought was completely normal mentally isn't at all. And the reason for that is that they had that in them and they were drawn to you and you to them through what you focus all your attention on all day long. A lot of people who are psychiatrists come from families who have mental health problems or abuse, and that's for a reason. A lot of people who, who go through abuse as children, some, 
actually go on to abuse others and the reason is because they're drawing that energy even if they don't think they are and they don't want to they are subconsciously drawing to themselves their own mirror image in childhood to appear in their lives and then when they see that mirror image some part of them feels such sorrow that they couldn't fully be that because they were abused that they go on to for some reason find themselves wanting to harm or destroy that part of themselves which they see in another child or, or person. So what do you do? What do you do if you're in the middle of the desert somewhere and you're surrounded by war, you're surrounded by people who are living in a country that is occupied or at war? How do you let go of you don't want to let go of your empathy. You don't want to be unemotional to the situation. Because if you do that, you... First of all, that could cause you to end up... And I know this is a positive trait that is seen in the military. For soldiers, you have to let go of that empathy to some extent in order to be able to do what you do. I get that. But to a certain extent, it can be dangerous to you. Because remember, after you're done fighting that war, you have to come home. And if you've lost your ability to empathize to some degree, um, that could just set up a whole set of circumstances in your life. And what you've seen and witnessed and taken part of and watched others take part of could have a very heavy impact on you, not only consciously, but subconsciously as well. So how do you get around this? Whatever the situation, whether you're, you're in prison, you're in the military, you're in a your family sucks, your job sucks, where you live, uh, there's nothing beautiful surrounding you, you're in poverty, whatever, you're in pain, you're sick, you know, you have cancer, or you've lost a limb, or you're paralyzed or something, how do you, how do you create the positive things that you see other people creating through things like the law of attraction? Well, I think that where you start off where you have to start off is with inspiration. You have to be inspired by something. You have to allow that. And if it is not part of your surroundings, you have to really seek it. You have to go and look for it. Whether that's watching a video or a documentary or something that really inspires you or whether the, if you're into nature and you happen to live in a place where you can get to someplace beautiful, whether it's your backyard or you have to go a little bit further to find that beauty. An art museum, um, if you have creative abilities, if you paint, draw, write, write something beautiful and inspiring, because some people who write tend to write a bunch of negative stuff. Um, don't do that when you're trying to be inspired. Try to write something inspirational. Read something inspirational. And if all else fails, I mean, if you're sitting there in a cell somewhere, or in a place where there is nothing around you to inspire you, then you, then you will have to imagine it. You will have to visualize it. And you will have to visualize it so strongly and with such positive emotion in other words, you'd have to see it, feel it, imagine you're there, and that you love being there, wherever there is. And once that emotional part kicks in, it will start working in your subconscious mind. And instead of drawing more of the same, more of the four walls you find yourself trapped within, more of the sickness or the imprisonment, or the war, or the shitty job, or the abuse, or whatever it is, whatever the situation you find yourself in, your subconscious mind will kick into effect through your emotions and start like a magnet to draw energy toward you that fits with what your emotional state is predominantly. Positive energy is stronger than negative energy. 
doesn't seem that way when you're surrounded by nothing but negative. But the moments you can spend on the positive will actually have an, ex an extremely strong effect if you do this consistently over time in banishing the negative. It really will. Now, I, like a lot of you, have found myself in negative situations throughout my life and surrounded by negativity at different times through different medias and found it impossible in those times to think positively. Absolutely impossible. And what I've done when this happens, when I can think to break myself out of it, is look at something beautiful, like the image you see on your screen. Or I'll go outside. Sometimes I've gone outside when I've just been really down and I just sit there and I don't even seem to notice my surroundings and then all of a sudden something will come into view a butterfly, a bird, something like that and it will just give me that flash of inspiration and hope that's what I'm talking about because when that happens it connects to you emotionally and that has a very very powerful effect and that is what the overlords, that's what I'll call them, the dark forces that are running humanity through the darkest of the dark of, hu of humanity on this planet, those in control and in charge of us, um, that is what they don't want you to experience. They don't want you to experience that moment of inspired awe and beauty and hope. That moment. Imagine if every single one of us at the same moment in time had that inspirational moment and stopped whatever we were doing if it wasn't something positive if we're at war if we're sick if we're fighting if we're abusing or being abused imagine if all of us at the same exact moment stopped and had that inspirational moment and then allowed that moment to turn into an hour. Imagine in one hour the energy shift that would happen on this planet with all of us. We'd wake up, we'd see what was really supposed to be in front of us, what, what our true potential is as human beings, and we'd be taking away these dark archons, energy source, our negativity, our fear, our pain, our sorrow, we'd be taking it away from them for one hour. If we all did that, I think that if we did that, we would actually destroy them because they wouldn't have humans to feed on anymore because that hour, once you experience it for an hour, you're going to keep on with it. It's going to become a permanent thing and humanity would be changed forever the way we treat each other on the planet would be changed forever. We wouldn't allow the elite to manipulate us anymore. We'd see all together that that was completely wrong and we wouldn't even put up with it for a moment. We wouldn't put up with watching people starve to death. We wouldn't put up with knowing that there are cures for cancer and other diseases that exist and are, are suppressed and kept from us or illegal. We wouldn't put up with it and the dark overlords wouldn't be getting their energy fixed on us anymore and we wouldn't allow them to if they tried to, to do it again because we'd be aware. So, I think that's the answer. That's my personal opinion on what the answer is to how, how to overcome neg negativity. How to stay positive in a negative world. It starts with one moment of inspiration for each of us. And if we collectively did it, it would change the world. And that's also my answer to how to bring down the New World Order, the Power Elite, and the Dark Overlords, or Archons, or Extraterrestrials, whatever you want to call them, that rule them, and through them rule us.